it's back to why do some people make a lot of money and some people struggle and and give presentations to anybody who can respirate. Um, do we have, and this goes back to a, another rule. I'm working on a lot of rules right now in my new book, The Rules of Cuts. Do we have rights in the sales process? Do we, should we put ourselves first? Or are we just going out there to rehearse and practice with? And there's nothing really wrong like uh, with that if you know it up front. You know, there's, there's such a thing as practicing in real situations. But how valuable, uh, do we have rights in the sales process? Can we ask questions before the appointment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, very important. This is why I love working from home because I, even on a phone call, I, I will say, why are we speaking today? What would you like to see happen? What is the time frame? What is the problem, the needs and greeds? Um, do you, uh, what's your budget? Do you have a budget set aside if you find a solution to this problem? And how do you make decisions in your family, in your business? What's the process? And, if I, and then you kind of summarize it and you review the needs and greeds. Remember, we got to find them, create them, exacerbate them. And then we review them and we say, if we could solve these problems, how would you feel about that? You wouldn't want to move forward, a negative redirection or yeah. something like that. Um, and, and this is, gut sales is the only sales technique I know where we don't give presentations. We hold our presentation, which is all our features and benefits and all the sizzle and steak and all those cute little sales words. We kind of save them to the very end and we blend everything that's good about our service or our product. We kind of blend it together with the um, presentation. We kind of take their needs and greeds and all our features and benefits and put them together like peanut butter and chocolate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We save it for the end. Do we give a presentation if someone doesn't qualify? No. no. Do no. we answer 40 minutes of Q&A? Um, if we don't, if, if this person is just asking, you know, machine gun questions, anybody ever get trapped in the machine, in the, in the yeah. question vortex or vacuum? Yeah. Yes. We've all been there, right? Where we have right. totally out of control. They're picking our brain 30, 40 minutes or longer asking questions. And then they say, gee, thanks for the information. I'll think about it. I'll talk to my spouse. I'll check my finances. I'll get back to you later. You just lost an hour, almost an hour of your life. And you did not make money the greatest sin of all for the time you exerted while you were working. So do we have, so what, how do we do? So we go back to the system. We set the agenda. We do the qualification. Then how do we close somebody? Uh, let's, let's do a role play here. Or do you have a question, Audrey? You look like you're ready. No, I can't. Okay. I can't wait to hear every role play. Okay, role play. When we role play, we basically, um, if we come out of the qualification step, um, the big one is: do they have the money to buy the property, or are they the owner of the property to sell it, or the person in authority? Mm -hmm. We gotta. We have to find out this information. I can tell you, Mr. Genius here, how many times I got in my car, I went to properties for meetings, and if God forbid they actually showed up, and then I gave the million-dollar presentation with the slideshow and everything else, and then they said, Claude, this is great, this is wonderful, if I had the money, I'd love to do business with you. Yeah. You know how many times that happened to me till I finally got it? That I have to find out about the money up front and everything else. So we don't close until we know we have a viable, high probability prospect, a likelihood. Okay, so and then when we close, what we basically do is go through three steps. We do a review. And the review is we, 